Hey friend, Brandon here. The audio is a little bit more live right now because we are reviewing the new Apple HomePod Gen 2. Now I don't wanna artificially make my living room sound even better than it normally does because it'll measure the reflections in your room and adjust so it sounds better. But I'm not just reviewing one HomePod, I'm reviewing two for the stereo spread effect. And of course, in order to support that, I have to have the Apple TV 4K. Now, if you've watched my previous audio reviews, you know I like focusing more on an experiential type of review. I brought in the binaural ears. So you wanna make sure that you have your headphones or earbuds in, in both ears so you can get the full experience for the actual sound samples. This gives you a step closer to a more realistic experience of what it's like to actually be in the room listening to the HomePods. Now the HomePods come in at $300, so if you have two of them plus the Apple TV, it comes in about $750. And I'll compare it with my personal home theater system, my Enclave audio system that costs two times as much. There's a full review of that if you wanna check it out that's up here. Now there's not a ton different from the first generation, but there are some differences. So let's just haul through them real quick in case you haven't watched another video about that before. But of course, there are always chapters down below if you wanna skip this part. The top display touch area is more inset and takes up more of the surface area. The color is a bit more midnight with a slight hint of blue to it compared to Gen 1. It uses Wi-Fi 4 instead of Wi-Fi 5 like the previous version or something more modern like Wi-Fi 6 and above, which is interesting. The base is bigger, but still stains wood surfaces. There are five tweeters instead of seven and four microphones instead of six. You can detach the power cable and it is more repair friendly. So those are the more notable changes between the first and second generation. Now you might ask, why in the world is Apple releasing this? If I were to speculate, Apple is involved in the Matter Smart Home standard along companies like Amazon and Google. So the HomePod supports that Matter standard and acts as a thread hub, which is necessary for that Matter ecosystem. Of course, setup is super easy. You just hold your phone next to the HomePod and it pops up. You just connect to it there. And when you set up your Apple TV, when you choose a room, it'll notice that it's also the same room that your speakers are in or your HomePod. So it'll ask you whether or not you want to connect your HomePods to your TV as TV speakers. Now, speaking of stereo speakers, they do not officially support the compatibility between Gen 1 and Gen 2. There are little ways that you can hack that if you want to, but the reason for that is likely because there are some sound characteristic differences between Generation 1 and Generation 2. When you're using a stereo pair of speakers, you want them to be a match pair where they sound the same. If you mix and match the speaker characteristics from the left and right channel, you'll have a weird imbalance. It won't sound the way it's supposed to. That's something that an audio engineer will typically understand. And so I looked it up and there's actually this statement from an Apple engineer themselves stating that this is why there's not an official support for it. But now that we have it all set up, let's go and listen to some samples. Make sure you put on your headphones and your earbuds. Now, the reason why you wanna make sure that you have your headphones and earbuds in both ears is because this binaural microphone allows me to walk around in different areas. It can hear my exact placement around where this virtual head is. So if I get closer to you, it sounds a little bit like this. Or if I go over here, it's like this. So it's kind of crazy and interesting. So for the best experience, make sure you have your earbuds in. All right, let's try listening to how something on Apple TV sounds. My first impressions is that it is a little mid forward and there's not a lot of low end to it, but let's compare it against the Enclave audio system. Now this system has way more power, so it definitely can get a lot louder. So I turned it down to 60 instead of max. Look, I know that they cost two times as much as the Apple TV, but it's totally worth it. If you buy a really good speaker system or sound system, it's gonna last you a long time. And having that insane immersive experience that we just listened to there with that really nice rumbly low end that's controlled is kind of, ah, it's really nice. Let's listen to some music and see how it sounds in the room.
Now, an interesting thing is that the HomePods pretty much have a max volume of about 80 decibels in this specific room, and it kind of caps out. It doesn't have as much low end that can push. On the Enclave, it can get significantly louder. On me. Now here's an interesting thing that not a lot of other reviewers are considering. A lot of people have mentioned that there's reduced bass on the HomePods, and I have to wonder, are they listening to it at max volume, half volume, or any spot in between? You have to consider how much low end the actual HomePods can produce. So that it may reach a certain point where you turn it up louder and it's not able to push more of that low end, which results in the mid range and the high end being perceived as louder because it actually is. I wanna compare how things sound both at 50% volume and 100% volume, and then I'll normalize the volume in post, and we can see if there's actually a difference in the low end. So by listening to these two different clips at a normalized volume, you're listening to the low end. You're not listening to all the overall fidelity of things. The low end is actually more prominent in the lower volume compared to the higher volume. So it sounds a little bit more anemic at that higher volume level. If I were to make a suggestion on what I think sounds the best to my ears, it actually sounds best between 50% and 75%. Once you go above that, I start hearing the low end potentially compressing a bit and not being able to, to match the levels of the high end and the mid range. So I'm curious, what do you notice? Now the HomePod offers a lot of ecosystem benefits that sound really great. And when it works, it's really amazing and convenient. But the thing is, it doesn't always work. I've had issues with setup where it doesn't actually bring up the prompt to connect to it. Sometimes when you move your phone over to the HomePod, it doesn't always transfer the audio playback to the HomePod. And in my setup for this actual video to get to sync with the Apple TV, it didn't always work. I had to kind of futz around with a lot of the menu settings in order to get it to work. And for having an ecosystem that's supposed to do all these things seamlessly and easily, that's actually a lot of different things I encountered in just a short period of time. But after you get over that hump of all those issues, it figures it all out and it's actually really quite nice. Maybe keep that in mind if you are the family tech support. So the question is, who is the HomePod for? Now, if you're not in a privileged position like I am, and maybe you don't care about audio as much as I do, then you may not go for a $1,500 audio sound system, and you need something that's more affordable. At $750 with the Apple TV, this can actually work quite well as a home theater setup. You're not gonna get huge rumbling bass out of it, but it does surprisingly sound quite immersive and fill up the room behind you, even though there are only two speakers in front of you. It's still not going to match physical speakers that are actually placed behind you, but it does a pretty good job of at least giving a lot of space to the room, so I have to commend Apple for that. And if you happen to be renting an apartment or you're in a condo and you have to be conscious of your neighbors, this gets a comfortable level without probably annoying them. And it's quite nice that you can add on to this. So if you want to buy one HomePod and then eventually add on a second one and you just have the added benefit of it working as a home entertainment system, that's quite nice. That provides a more affordable way to kind of move up to a more robust system. Beyond that, it's the typical things that you know about the HomePod, Siri, still Siri. So it's not the most useful compared to other assistants, but it can help out with your smart home devices. Speaking of which, let's talk to Siri about this video sponsor, NordVPN. Hey, Siri, uh, what's NordVPN? NordVPN is the leading provider of online privacy and security solutions. It helps protect your personal and sensitive information from cyber threats by encrypting your online activities, so it is private and secure, even on public Wi-Fi. Oh, well, I have this neat little home entertainment system. Can I use it with that? NordVPN also helps you access restricted content from all around the world. So if you're a fan of international shows, movies, or music, you'll love the NordVPN servers in 60 countries. Huh, but I don't want anything to buffer when I'm watching it. Is it gonna slow down my internet? According to independent tests, NordVPN is the fastest VPN service on the market. They have over 5,400 servers across the world, so you have more freedom and a faster connection and they constantly upgrade their server network and architecture. Okay, but what if I don't like it? 
If you're not completely satisfied with NordVPN, they offer a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you can try it risk-free. All right, sweet. Got any deals? Yes. If you click the link in the description or go to nordvpn.com slash techtoday, you can get a special discount and extra subscription time for free. All right. Thanks, Siri. I'll check out NordVPN. And so should you. What are your thoughts and your observations? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you want to pick up the HomePods or anything else I mentioned in this video, go ahead and check out the links down below in the description. And of course, check out my review of the Enclave audio system that we use to compare with the HomePods. It's quite amazing. Thanks for watching. This is Tech Today. Until next time.